And another theory we discussed many a times here on the podcast also fits in, in, into this, the, the use and gratification theory, right? The use and gratification theory, just a reminder, um, posits that people use media to satisfy specific needs, use and gratification. So football fandom provides entertainment, escapism, community, group thing, what I just said, and more. So the media, of course, taps into these this human needs with their football coverage. And it aims to maximize viewership, revenue via those strategic programs and engagement. And I'm not saying it's not good. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying the programming is not good. I'm just saying that's what they're doing. If, for example, you don't just have the football match itself. Um, you have like the coverage around it, right? And for example, CBS, it's a fantastic job. Thierry Henry, it's fantastic. Um, now, uh, I, her name just slipped the lady that said she works for Fox while she was on CBS, which was hilarious. Um, so they are great. It's, it's great entertainment. They're funny. They're insightful. Some more, some less. Hey, Micah. <laughs> but they're, they, it's great. But it's all part of this. We need to maximize the content we're getting, the, the time the audience spends with us, the amount of money we're making. Okay, so that, that's all at the center. And hand in hand with that is one of our favorite theories that we discussed many times here as well, the agenda setting theory. Okay, we know already that agenda setting notes how media highlights like certain topics or narratives like that try to influence the public focus, right? So for example, here, football, transfer gossips, league standings, player drama, your yeah, football coverage sets specific agendas for fans to follow. Cristiano, even, even Ronaldo, not in the Champions League, but Cristiano Ronaldo now playing for Al Hilal, I think, or Messi in the MLS, right? So, ah, oh, will, will the Asian Champions League now be a, I don't know, be a competitor to the UEFA Champions League, for example? Yeah, those are all agendas that are being set by the production companies, houses, um, by Champions League, by UEFA, right? Why? Well, several reasons, obviously. One, UEFA and all the clubs involved benefit from us spending more time on them slash with them, obviously. Now, I'm not going to go into too many conspiracy theories, but, <laughs> and that's how it starts, right? <laughs> follow, for, follow my full episode on Rumble. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just making one point. Of course, politics are also happy that if you're focusing on football, we don't focus on other things, but I'll leave it at that, right? But I think that makes sense. If you focus on one thing, you can't focus on the other things. Yeah, so, you know, as you know, even if you don't know, you hear it from my accent, I'm from Germany. And when the World Cup was in Germany, for example, everyone was super happy, like, hey, cool, World Cup fever. Oh, yeah, we're so awesome. Everyone loves Germans. Oh, yeah, nice. And while we were in the, the World Cup fever, um, the Polit, polit, politics like made some regulatory changes, for example, some changes in, in some of the laws. I'm, again, not going into, into details, but that's always what's happening. So it, this traction is good, is what I'm saying. Yeah, the rest is going to be on Rumble, so I'm not going into that. And no, I'm not on Rumble, I'm joking. Right? But it, that's enough. So agenda setting, okay? So we obsess over storylines. Um, the media elevates through this relentless coverage, right? More highlights, more YouTube clips, and so on, which gives them like outsized importance. Because who really cares, to be honest, who's going to be the, I don't know, the seven... <laughs> who, who really cares who's going to be the 37th new player for Chelsea? <laughs> Sorry, people. Um, but you see, even though while I'm joking, you see what I'm saying, right? Okay.